4 p.m. We're bringing you developing news. And the stories behind the headlines. This is Storycon. I'm Patrick Paez. I'm Ed Lingao. Here are some stories we're watching this Wednesday, midweek, July 3. The Philippines and China have, have agreed to de-escalate tensions in the West Philippine Sea. The DFA says, uh, parang iba atay video natin. <laughs> it says, Beijing and Manila have agreed to restore trust amid recent incidents in disputed waters. But while there, while there is progress in developing measures to manage the situation, the DFA says, and we quote, significant differences remain. Meantime, China's so-called monster ship has been spotted again in the West Philippine Sea. Maritime security expert Ray Powell says the vessel was sighted off Ayungin Shoal this morning. He adds that China Coast Guard vessel 5203 was also in Ayungin with the monster ship. And House Speaker Martin Robaldes is reportedly in favor of strict regulation over the total ban of pogos. In an ambush interview aired in a radio station, uh, Romualda said the ban should only be imposed on illegal pogos. He believes the total ban would only drive pogos underground. Joining us today, Ana Marie Pamituan, Editor-in-Chief of the Philippine Star and Storycon's resident political pundit, Ronald Liamas. Hi, happy Hi. Wednesday. Parang iba po ba ni Tito Ronald ngayon? No? Tito Ronald, ikaw ba nasa Pilipinas na o nasa US pa? Alas 4 ng madaling araw. US pa, para <laughs> pupuntang airport. Ah, Ayun. Pupuntang iba, airport pagkatapos ng StoryCon. Yan, okay. 4 a.m. no? Ronald, 4 a.m. There in... 4 a.m. 4 a.m. Okay. Bok, napansin mo yun, yung last headline natin. Oh, yun siya. Romualdez wants to ban illegal pogos. <laughs> <laughs> Alam na nila yun. <laughs> Alam na nila yung tao yun. <laughs> ah, talaga? Talaga? Sinabi niya. Total, total no, ban daw. Maybe, ah, hindi maybe total the, ban. Maybe it's the way it was written ah. lang. Yo, <laughs> maybe it's the way it was written. <laughs> yun, yung kahap, yun yung problema kagabi. Ay, yung sunod na sa kagabi. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the newscasts, you have to be careful with this. Kagabi, the, the story that was read out loud was... Uh, President Marcos approves the proposed uh, 6.53 trillion peso budget. Hindi pa approve. Yeah. Okay. Yung national expenditure NEP, program. Inapprove lang ng pangulo ang submission ng oh. NEP to Congress. Oh. Pero the, the yeah, yun ang inapprove niya yung proposal. The the, 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 the lead stories were uh, inaprobahan ng Pangulo ang, six point, ang paano ka lang 6.53 trillion peso budget para sa 2025. Mm. So what's the right, right, right thing mm. to say? Inaprobahan ng Pangulo ang pag-submit sa Kongreso ng uh, National Expenditure kulang, Program. Oh, <laughs> for submission. May kulang lang. Mahaba kasi sa headline. Ikaw na may head. Eh, 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 <laughs> ko nakikinig ka sa balita parang, ah, talaga aprobado na. <laughs> Ibang malaking kaibahan yun. <laughs> right. Approve right. yung submission to Congress. Submission for approval. <laughs> or can it be said, <laughs> National Expenditure Program? Mas hindi maintindihan yun eh. Not, not in the headline. Oo nga, haba-haba nun. Proseso eh. kasi. Na mm. Iba proseso. Pero ang alam ko dyan, pag... Pag nasa kamay pa ng, uh, na, uh, ng executive branch yan, eh, national expenditure no, program. Oo, talaga. Ito siguro, hmm. ma ma makakatulong sa atin, maliwanagan niya. Kasi bagay ito dati ng executive branch, di ba? <laughs> so tama ba yun, Ronald? <laughs> na pag uh, <laughs> nasa side ng executive branch, ang they call it nas national expenditure program. Hindi ko kabisado yan, Patrick. Wala akong pakialam sa budget. No, Hindi kasi po. politiko. Ay, eh. Mat siyan eh, mat. Doon ka, lang, doon ka kaya, palagi kaya, sa operations eh. Kaya ka naman ng journalism para makaiwas sa mat. Ayun, yun lang. <laughs> Pero ito yun, uh, it's, it's the NEP that is submitted by Malacanang to Congress. The NEP is basically yes. the compilation of the submissions from the departments. From all the departments, all, mm. all branches mm. of government. Oh, Binuo ng, ng DBM. Budget proposal, mm. oh, budget proposal, Sean. Uh, budget proposal. Binuo ng DBM, inaproba ng Pangulo for submission mm. to Congress. Right. Hmm. For approval hmm. of Congress, yes. for signature of Malacanang eventually. Hmm. At saka ang Congress, Ayun, yun, <laughs> at saka ang Congress, <laughs> ang Congress, I think, tama ba ito, Ami, no? nag-cover tayo ng Senate, pero I don't know how much they've changed the rules. Ano? Ang alam ko lang, hmm. uh, pwede bawasan, hindi pwede dagdagan. Hmm. Right? Hmm. Pero hmm. nagkakaroon yes. ng insertions. Hmm. <laughs> Parang gano'n, yeah. tama ba ako? <laughs> As a general rule. General rule in the Constitution mm -hmm. says that. Pwedeng bawasan, hindi pwede dagdagan ng mga congressman. 
Ano yung pwedeng dagdagan? Parang hindi nasusunod yung general rule na yan eh. Oh, yun. Kasi may insertions. <laughs> Pero nasa constitution yun ha. I remember that. Nasa constitution. Uh, um, uh, Congress cannot add to what was proposed by Malacanang. Mm. <laughs> Pwede I... siyang i-challenge kung meron. Kung sa kasakali, constitutional issue eh. Pwede siyang i-challenge sa Supreme sa Court sa actually. Suprema. Okay. And I remember no, yeah. from my days covering the Senate, no, uh, I think, I wonder, hmm. wait, it, was it Joker Arroyo or Juan Ponce Enrile who'd always point out that the single biggest uh, piece of legislation that senators and congressmen really have to work on is the national budget. Yes. Kaya itong dalawa Kasi po... Kasi napakahirap nga daw intindihin eh. Yun. Kaya itong... Napaka ano eh. Kailangan may nukes scrutiny, eh, di ba? Right. At di ba? Kaya... Talagang, talagang kaya... kailangan tingnan mo mabuti. At kaya itong dalawang kaya senador nito... Kaya nga nalunan sa Senate si Senator Ping Lacson. Siya yung magaling magposisi right. niya eh. Right. May at... mga double, quadruple, even quintuple na reporting Yun. sa budget. At saka Ronald uh... Ami, no? Kaya itong dalawang senador nito, si Senator Joker Arroyo at Senator Juan Ponce. Hindi, ma... hindi mahilig. Hindi nila sinusukat yung yung galing nila o yung trabaho nila sa Senado sa dami ng mga bills na pinapasa o sinasubmit pero kung gaano sila kabosisi doon sa national budget because really it is it is ano because that's that's government uh, functioning and delivering services it's all about that but if it's the biggest uh, piece of legislation by senators and congressmen can you imagine how many congressmen lang for example really pay attention to the budget hearings yeah. out of 300 right now 312 right. how many congressmen really pay attention or attend the budget hearings <laughs> usually kaya nga, eh, eh. kaya nga eh sino ngayon ang uh, senador na gumagawa ng function ni Enrile ni Ping Lacson mm. at saka ni Joker Arroyo mm -hmm. ngayon ha sino gumagawa niyan dahil walang Eh, walang, walang si Robin Padilla. <laughs> si, si Robin Padilla. Well, to, to their point, Ronald, no? to their point. <laughs> may statement nga yun. May statement si President Marcos na related to the budget. Hindi ko mapagtugma eh. Sabi niya, yung part daw ng budget na yon yung measures, to continue uh, easing uh, price increases daw. Hindi ko alam kung saan dun sa Which budget part? na yun. Siguro <laughs> right. kailangan okay. basahin natin yun. Ano? Uh, well, yan ang statement niya about that well, budget. Well, yun ang kailangan pa paliwanag so, ng, yun, ng DBM. Sa committee niya on oh. constitutional amendments. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Pero in fairness, ano, I think that's that's where the gap uh, happens. Eh. I think that's where, let's say, for example, the DBM needs to to explain how this budget will help ease is prices is inflation inflation oh, i mean no. i'm sure it, it, there's a rational explanation not, that's not being heard or said ganun ah dati mahilig pa pala wala sa amin si si Ben Jokno eh oh, oh. under secretary pa si Ben oh, Jokno oh. sa ano sa DBM para ni Cory uh, papasalan namin yan makipagkwentuhan ganun ganun uh. hmm. well one one example <laughs> i can imagine Ronald no ami is that for example how does this budget help uh, keep, keep inflation down maybe doon sa support services na Popondohan in agri, for example. Para, sa agriculture, oh, siguro, pwede. Let's see, pero let's see. Support pero services for farm, hear. farm support services, pwede. We, right. We, Taka, we need... Baka nandiyan na yung, ano, yung matagal ng pinapangakong ano, cold chain facilities. Yun, mga bagay-bagay <laughs> na ganyan, <laughs> Ami. Tama. Okay. Inihintay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Iba. Meron no, mer yeah, mer ba lumalabas? Ami, may lumalabas na ba ng mga lump sums dyan? <clears throat> yung mga, kwan, yung mga nakatagong mga pork. Yung bawal yan. Yun na yun ang hahanapin. Oh. Oh. Bawal si na yun eh, di ba? Oh. Bawal na yung lump sum appropriations, oh, pero they keep finding a way eh. They keep finding a way Nakatago. na magkaroon ng ganun pa rin proseso. Nakatago oh. yun. <laughs> Pati nga yung mga confidential remember, fund, lumaki ng lumaki, di ba? Hindi, uh, hindi natin alam. I also remember, uh, was it last year na, di ba, bawal magdagdag dapat ang kongreso doon sa NEP, pero... Pagdating sa Bicam, doon pa nagdadagdag. Yes. Yan na nga. <laughs> eh, yung Bicam is supposed to reconcile. Din yan. <laughs> the Bicam is supposed to oh, reconcile versus the two, two chambers. It's not its own Congress. Uh, hmm. <laughs> where, they, where they can oh, handle it. Hindi, hindi pwede. Di ba, unresolved yan na yung question na yan, ano? Oo. Oh, oh. Unresolved yung question na yan. Nagkali mo na lang. Yes. Baka pwede niyo ibitayin si Kwan, si Shelo Magno, para oh, yeah. i-deconstruct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I-deconstruct yung budget na yan. Hmm. Ano doon siya galing eh? Under Secretary of Finance. Mm. Nakikita mm. niya yung mga nakatago na yan. <laughs> diba? Under the solution, oh. yeah, we should bring it in, uh, especially when the budget season starts. Uh, and we usually, yes. usually, oh, usually it starts after SONA. 
yung padali kasi ito. nga eh, ma- mahirap din explain kasi sa tao kung sa kasakala no hindi siya it's not a sexy topic kasi for politicians eh <laughs> kaya hindi <laughs> eh, siya masyado na, ano nami, you're talking hindi about siya masyadong napag-uusapan you're talking about at mahirap explain sa taong bayan eh you're talking about 6 trillion kung sa kung saan ang minimum wage yeah. is nasa 600 <laughs> <laughs> yon yon pwede ka nun nen pwede ka nun nen na ho dito this is where your taxes go Siguro, six ganun. trillion versus six hundred <laughs> medyo mahirap ang ano ten uh-huh. percent increase in this in this year's budget ten uh, percent by the way I didn't see that the, the the details eh. that's another thing we should know no well, if if that's a uh, a normal increase in the mm, budget that's mm. covered by you're supposed to look at the trends in the increase uh-huh. eh, and when where yes. where the, mm. the add on sorry does that only cover inflation, for example, mm. which was uh, how many percent last year, and or or are there new are there new uh, expenditures mm. coming in this year? Na may big ticket expenditures. And then for the bi- for the longest time, the biggest chunk of the budget went to debt appropriations. I don't know if that's still the case. Uh, automatic debt, debt service. Panong pata ni Korean mo? But that, that, that's all service, automated, di ba? Ano kaya ba, Ronald? Uh, di ba? That's automated. Ang ganda yon naman eh. Yeah. Ang ganda yon. Ang pinakamalaki. Oh. Uh, Ang ganda yon. Kung nakalagay sa Constitution, dapat education. Education. Yeah. Oh, pero hmm. hindi rin nasusuro yung Constitution don. Debt servicing yung hmm. pinakamalaki. Okay. Hanggang ngayon? Ilan ba, ilan ba Ed yung deficit ngayon? No, hindi ko alam mo kung natatang. Oh. Matematik siya. Between yung budget at saka yung earnings natin. Change, revenues. change topic so, na nga. Palalim na palalim eh. Let's talk about politics. Uh, <laughs> balik tayo ng ano, West Philippine eh. Sea. Gano'ng kalaki yung deficit? <laughs> balik sa politics. <laughs> balik sa politics. <laughs> and the budget. <laughs> oh, nangangari doon tayo sa usapan natin. <laughs> Oye, oh, yeah, you know, ano, tanong natin, Ami, ano na sa front page ng ano, Philippine Star? It's a slow day, ano? Pwera yung mga usapan sa budget, mga follow-up dun sa meeting uh, yung between the Philippines and China. Finally, actually, meron pang mas interesting eh, yung Monday, yung meeting ng Chi- which we touched on actually yesterday with the PAOC Undersecretary Gilbert mm. Cruz. Ang balita namin, ang nag-request ng meeting na yun with PAOC and with Lucas Bersamin was the Chinese Embassy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because of the death of of, of several Chinese nationals mm-hmm. na na nadagdagan pa nung is, kailan lang na last last month na may napatay na Chinese and a Chinese American kaya daw pati USFBI ngayon nakikisale sa pag-iimbestiga sa pagtulong sa pag-iimbestiga dahil it involves a Chinese American pinatay daw although uh, we're not sure kung ang mga suspect e pogo Pero hanggang ngayon, hindi pa, hindi pa alam eh. Yun daw ang pinunta actually ni Chinese ambassador sa Malacanang. Da kaya pa, o oh, ang kausap niya actually. It was not the one with the DFA. This is different. Mm-hmm. Yung punta niya sa Malacanang, yun ang hinihingi niya na action na niyo naman to kasi marami ng Chinese na napapatay dito sa Pilipinas. Okay. Well, And no, several of them were linked to Pogos. If, yun, yun ang ano. I mean, Ronald, you know, if we look at recent developments, it seems like diplomacy is kicking in. Uh, two, two, at least two incidents this week, you know, but two days ago. Uh, finally, nakita yung bilateral consultation mechanism. Yes. It kicked in. Um, yeah, naka-schedule yan. And, and se- yan. second is itong, ano, itong meeting at in Malacanang with uh, Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin and uh, the Chinese Ambassador Xi Lin. I'll add another hmm. incident. Is yung, uh, of course, there's two ways to look at it, but this incident uh, involving a fire uh, in, in a Filipino fishing boat. Ah, um, okay. Uh, of course, uh, Commodore Tariele is saying na hinarangan, pero hmm. there's another uh, way of looking at it, I think, from the Philippine Coast Guard, the spokesman si Balilo, Commodore Balilo, is saying hmm. na... Uh, Initially hinarang, uh, pero pinayagan rin yung Philippine Navy na tumulong. So, half yes. glass, half full, half empty. Pero, you know, but, yeah. but if you look at the chain of events, the recent developments, diplomacy seems to be kicking in, Ronald. Tama. At, at uh, uh, mukhang yung pinag-uusapan natin more than a week ago, mm-hmm. ay uh, nagsisimula na yung de-escalation. Mm-hmm. Sana magtuloy-tuloy yan. Mm-hmm. Dahil wala naman tayo masyadong i-de-escalate eh. Dahil yung, oh, <laughs> yung, yung ginagawa lang natin ay mag, magbigay ng supply. So, mas malaking bahagi ng de-escalation ay kailangan manggaling sa China. Mm-hmm. Pero kailangan mm-hmm. ayusin ang ating gobyerno 
yung magkaibang messaging. Halimbawa sa Coast Guard, nag-aaway. Mismo yung mga spokespersons ng okay. Coast Guard. No? Di ba? Hmm. Hindi maganda tignan eh. Hindi maganda tignan dahil very public yung away eh. Hindi lang siya interpretation nung nangyari. Mukhang merong kwan eh. May dynamics eh. Di okay. ba? Kay Tariela at saka kay Juan Benilo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Ronald, I'll, I'll, I'll hmm. present to you another counter-narrative on that. Kasi... Kanina, kachat ko yung mga kasama natin, mga anchor sa The Big Story. Eh. Uh, mm. Isn't this also, could it be another way of looking at this is government, okay? Playing different hands. Sabi nga nila, no? Dito sa China issue na ito, that a weaker, a country that is in a weaker position should have many options out there, should have many trial balloons out there, should be playing as many cards as possible. Uh, you have, Maganda you have... yun. Okay yun. Okay yun, Patrick, kung by design. Mm -hmm. Ibig sabihin, dinesign nyo mo na gano'n. Right. Mahirap kung kayo mismo nako-confuse. Eh. Kung by mistake. <laughs> yun, yun yung mahirap. Kung yan ay design nyo in terms of tactics, di ba? Ay uh, baka okay siya. Pero for now, sa aking vantage point, hindi ko siya nakikita as a, de as a design. Eh. No? Kasi ito lang, Ronald, no? ito lang, Ronald. Ito lang, Ronald. In one corridor discussion or conversation with a top security uh, official. He, he did say na, for example, na in the case of Commodore Tariela, no, sabihin na natin, ang, 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 ang pagkakasabi ng itong official nito, sabi niya, there is some use for Commodore Tariela. <laughs> okay. So parang, parang may, may, may play na ganon, at least from the security official. Then he did also say that, not to worry because there are adults in the room. It was his way of assuring <laughs> us that while, while the saber rattling may be unnerving to some, but there are adults in the room and that there are some uh, use for this carrot and, classic carrot and stick, I guess, Ronald. Who is the adult in the room? Ayun. Eh, paano, si, paano kaya sila daw, sila yung description daw. nila kay Gilbert Chodoro? <laughs> <laughs> paano parang, paano parang, description nila doon? Adult ba yan o ano? Parang hindi siya yung nire-refer na adult in the room. Parang lang. Parang lang. Oh. <laughs> Bok, let's begin. Yeah. Parang. Ronald, parang nga, Ronald. Parang kasi, parang. No, evolving, evolving yung response natin eh. <laughs> Di ba? It, so, it is an evolving response to what's happening uh, right. so, in the yeah. South China. Si Kaya medyo, medyo hindi pa rin malinaw eh. Siguro kahit gobyerno natin eh. Hmm. Nag-iisip pa rin yan eh. Pinag-uusapan eh. Uh, so you're exploring multiple options, sabi nga ni Patrick. Yeah. Okay. So, pwede natin bigyan yeah. ng benefit of the doubt. Pwede natin bigyan ng benefit. At sana, <laughs> at sana, yung adult in the room, hindi puti. Yun. Hindi <laughs> naman siguro. Hindi naman siguro. Hindi <laughs> naman, <laughs> naman, <laughs> naman siguro. Okay. Let's be in our <laughs> first, first guest for today, <laughs> international studies expert, Renato De Castro, Professor De Castro, magandang hapon, and welcome back to StoryCon. Good <laughs> afternoon, Patrick. Kamu Professor. Hi, sir. Rob, Hi, Rob sino ba yung adult in the room? Ayan, siguro mas alam uh, na ito. Hindi ko alam eh. Wala akong alam eh. <laughs> Wala akong alam ito eh. Kung sino yun eh. Eh, baka si, si Ronald. Eh, si Ronald may experience sa gobyerno eh. O. Oh. Di ba may adult in the room din? Doon sa mediation? Doon sa Scarborough Shoal? O. Oh. Alam na alam ni Ronald yun eh. Pero, Prof, oh. pro, pag, pag, uh, oh. adult, pag adult ang pinag-uusapan, si tapos si Ronald ang pinag-uusapan dyan. Iba, si, ibang dating. Senior. <laughs> senior citizen. <laughs> Pero, <laughs> Professor, <laughs> what, what, what do you think of this story nga? Professor, anong tingin nyo dito sa de-escalation? Mm -hmm. Na meron na tayong parang ano yan, ano? preliminary talks na meron ng ano, may initial agreement na to de-escalate. You think that can be sustained considering what's happening in the West Philippine Sea well, and what's at stake for the two countries? Well, okay, uh, we have to differentiate no? at tinatawag natin conflict management mm. and conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. mm. So what's happening is conflict management because the tension has already increased. Uh, yes. Of course, yun ang yari doon ng June 17, uh, kung merong uh, Filipino service personnel na napatay, of course, this would trigger a mutual defense treaty based on the statements mm. of uh, uh, Admiral Aquilino and, of course, the position of the U.S. indo pacom So mm. uh, both sides realized that they have to pull back because once, of course, you have 
uh, a major confrontation between the United States and China in the South China Sea, we will basically lose control. Even the Chinese would lose control. No? So it will be a dynamic that will simply go out of hand. So going back, just, uh, if you're familiar with the Cuban Missile Crisis, so sabi nga, you have to have fuller hands intervening. So there was an effort, of course, initially by the Executive Secretary to de-escalate. And of course, uh, right now we have this uh, bila uh, bilateral consultative com uh, mechanism that is uh, you know, trying at its best to de-escalate the tension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Professor, the professor, dispute. Pro yes. professor, ano bang ibig sabihin oh. natin ng de-escalation? Uh, anong ibig sabihin okay. natin ng de-escalation dito sa crisis management na nangyayari? Dahil parang, ano, well, ano pa yung pwede natin i-de-escalate? We, we, we are just supplying our troops oh, sa BRP yung, Sierra Madre. So, uh, yung, yung de-escalation ba ay <laughs> ititigil yung pag-supply? Yung de-escalation ba ay uh, basically uh, rhetorics? Uh, De, ah, kasi o oh, ang escalation na nangyari nung uh, June 17, you know, before, no, pag yung supply dinideliver na ng mga rubber dinky, hindi na hinaharas ng Chinese Coast Guard. Kapag nakapasok na yung malaking supply ship, tapos dinideliver na yung mga supply on board the rubber dinky na minamanage ng quad, uh, Wala na. Umaga, proof na yan. Pero the Chinese escalated it by intercepting the rubber dinky. And of course, I think the game plan of the Chinese then, and this is based, of course, on the analysis of uh, the Philippine Navy spokesperson, the Rear Admiral Roy Trinidad, the Chinese were, of course, facing us to fire the first shot. Mm -hmm. If we have fired the first shot, then the Chinese would claim uh, it's a self-defense, so they would basically uh, take over yung mga rubber dinkies and possibly even board yung BRP Sierra Madre. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, yung squad that were delivering the supplies maintained their professionally mm -hmm. sent to the pool, and of course, our troops on board the BRP Sierra Madre did not fire. So uh, we were able to close to prevent the escalation from, of course, achieving the goal of the Chinese in forcing us to fire first, to fire the first shot. Because this is the case of the Chinese. They did it with the Indians in 1962. Hello? Yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. That's what I meant. That's what I meant, Prof. Prof, that's what I meant. Diba China ang dapat mag-de-escalate? Oh, yeah, tama. Dapat itigil nila. Uh, we go back to the status quo. The once the supplies are being delivered by the rubber dinky, uh, then they stop the harassment. Mm -hmm. Prof, Prof, let me let me just try to rephrase uh, or uh, tweak uh, Ronald's question. Um, uh, do we already see signs of de-escalation uh, as a result of the BCM, or are we still waiting for that? I asked because some people are saying, "Oh, nagbawasan ng ng boats ang China dun sa area uh, from 120 naging 19 na lang, so malaki lang karon 30." Pero wouldn't the real test be when we finally send another boat to uh, resupply? That's the real test of whether or not. Uh, there is de-escalation. Yes. Baka, baka we're, we're yes, already that hoping that uh, de-escalated just because we had a meeting. Yes, that's the case. No? Pero, of course, kung titignan rin natin yung mga situations, no? uh, how there, there is a disconnect between what's happening in Beijing and, of course, in the South China Sea. Or, again, this is a, a case of the Chinese saying one thing and doing another thing. Mm -hmm. Ito palagi yung ino-warn sa atin ng mga Vietnamese. Uh, balik po tayo doon sa visit po ni President Marcos sa Beijing. Uh, nagkaroon ng agreement for a hotline. Yeah. So, uh, in two instances ito na ginamit, nagkaroon ng crisis, ginamit natin yung hotline. We are showing that this will be a conflict management mechanism. Uh, during the first time we used the hotline, it took the Chinese about six to nine hours to answer. Oh, what a hotline. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Cold line. Oh, nine, 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 <laughs> okay, that's so, an interesting detail. So, the purpose detail. of the hotline, so, uh, hotline, no? And of course, what also shocked President Marcos, no? When he was in Beijing, no? Supposedly, they were, he was talking with President Xi Jinping. Tapos nangyari yung incident na hinarang ho ng Chinese Coast Guard yung isang Philippine Navy boat, no? Uh, na nagdadala ng debris from a Chinese rocket. Yeah. You yeah. don't even taxing them. Just give us a debris. Inap ng Chinese Coast Guard Kinap, yung yeah. uh, table na nagdadala mo. Oh, tapos, again, uh, That's your Sunday we, case, have I to, right. oh, we have to basically look at Chinese action uh, rather than, of course, to so simply rely on what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Sir, let me still be the cynic here. Um, doesn't it, uh, to the adva isn't it to the advantage of China to, to dribble us around uh, uh, indefinitely? I mean, escalate, de-escalate, escalate, de-escalate. Uh, doesn't that work in their favor? Because in the meantime, uh, uh, Sierra Madre crumbles into the ocean. <laughs> Dagdag, Prop, do sa tanong ni Ed, uh, Prop, skeptical ka ba do sa tinatawag nila de-escalation? Skeptical well, ka ba dyan? Based sa uh, ating karangasan. Si Ronald, si Ronald hmm. is familiar with what happened at the Scarborough show, di ba? Yung umatras tayo, sila hindi. Oh, let's put uh, Ronald on the spot. Uh, Nag-i-enjoy sa Amerika, no? <laughs> right? Yung the Scarborough show. There was supposed oh. to be a commitment for mutual withdrawal. Ano nangyari, di ba? And everyone was blaming him for the American... And, of course, the late president, Benigno Aquino III. But all the time, it was the Chinese that reneged on their commitment for mm. a mutual withdrawal. Uh, will you agree with me, Ronald? Definitely. Kaya nga, kaya nga Prof, sinasabi mo lang na skeptic, mukhang skeptical kayo dito sa de-escalation na ito because of uh, our well, experiences uh, in the past. Of course. I, I think you will also share my skepticism given the, uh, your mm. experience during the uh, term of the late President Benito Aquino III? Well, we're John. hoping na sana ay may mangyari dito. We're hoping. Pero based on past experiences, eh, tama ka, medyo skeptical tayo. But, uh, oh, let, oh, Prof, Prof, Ronald, Prof and Ronald, what sort of uh, yes. uh, action do we, uh, do, do we want to see from China, from the Chinese side, that will uh, at, at least give more confidence, for example, to on, on the escalation? What sort of response or action do we expect to see? Do we want well, to see? Well, ayun nga yung sinasabi ni Ronald, Lisa, kailangan mo yung adult in the room. Eh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a form probably of an American carrier battle group watching over the, uh, the, the resupply. <laughs> Pero pero sa photo mo siguro matetest matetesting natin ano ano. Pwede nating testingin in the next uh, ano bang tawag natin doon yung mga expedition ng mga fishermen natin to to within our EEC. Siguro doon matetesting kasi kasi at, uh, at this point ang ang report natin from our our authorities eh nababawasan daw ngayon yung patrol vessels ng China. In the West Philippine Sea, yun yung pinaka-latest. So, tignan natin kung tatagal yan. Saka kung mag-organize ng panibagong fishing, fishing tour. Hindi uh, mo expedition, kundi yung regular na, regular lang nating ano. Yung, yung kapareho nung dati na pag hindi nila hinorasyon, siguro pwede ba yun? Na, yun na nalang ang pinaka-test niya, di ba? Kung parang nag-discalate nga. Pero Ami, yung monster uh, ship nila ay pumunta uli sa, Scar sa Scarborough, yung oh, pinakamalaking ma, Coast Guard vessel. Oh, oh, malapit, uh, pero ulit. international waters yun. No? Uh, yung dinadaanan naman daw is international waters. Paikot-ikot oh, lang uh, sa rin. Uh, excuse me, Ami, if I can uh, <laughs> yes, clarify, yes. no? Uh, let's refer to dun sa statement ni Rear Admiral Boy Trinidad. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. who of course gave the report about the uh, number of the decreasing number of Chinese ships. Sinabi niya, this is what we observed, but he said, I would not speculate. Mm-hmm. Oh, una, ano ibig sabihin nun, madaming reasons bakit pa nag, uh, nag-lessen yung number. Probably they're mm-hmm. just replenishing, replenishing while waiting for other ships to arrive. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably uh, uh, just a tactical measure mm-hmm. to put us mm-hmm. in a position of uh, we're lull, then suddenly I'll be deployed na naman sila na madami. You know, I know, uh, Prof, no, uh, me, we, we had Ray Powell here mm-hmm. a few weeks ago, and his explanation yeah. about the presence of Chinese ships, the mass, the swarming of Chinese ships in the West Philippine Seas, he had one explanation, which is, uh, minsan, no, binibigyan ng, uh, ng uh, subsidy na gasolina, mm-hmm. <laughs> yung mga maritime uh, vessels nito, at para mm-hmm. ma-consume yung subsidy nila, they just go out to sea, and then sometimes just stay there. <laughs> Para until ma, ma, ma replenish yung subsidy nila ulit ng fuel. So, uh, the way, the way Ray Powell explained it, it doesn't have to have any tactical uh, purpose or objective. Sometimes lang daw nag-uubos ng subsidy yan, ng gasolina yung mga ma- sasakay na yan. So, it could be any of those reasons. Yes, mm. a lot of things, a lot of factors. So, Professor, uh, antingin mo ba yung ating gobyerno ay... Uh, open na uh, yung pinagdedebatihan noong nakaraang linggo na sasabihin sa China yung schedule ng resupply. Uh, yung ating gobyerno ba ay yun ang ibig sabihin ng de-escalation? Ay, hindi. Uh, Pinabuloan na yan ni President Marcos. Sabi niya, we yes. will not inform. We will, we will not. not announce. Well, we are a sovereign country. Good. Hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't it up here, uh, Ronald, uh, Prof, that uh, yung statement na um, the statement that was coming out of Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin's, uh, uh, I think, press conference, the, the, the points there in his statement, yun talaga yung position ng National Maritime Council, ng gobyerno, ng administration, except that they had to do some damage control because of that word that he uttered outside of the press statement which caused a lot of uh, alarm and triggered a lot of uh, outrage from the security and defense uh, establishment. And that the statement accident. being, I know, uh, <laughs> that um, misunderstanding. Ah, misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. <laughs> okay, accident. Uh, accident. Uh, 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 misunderstanding. So, but looking back, remove that, that, that uh, one-off statement from the executive secretary, Parang ang lumalabas yung statement niya, yung prepared statement niya, pinaka-policy talaga direction ng ano, administration. That's uh, just no, my sense. Uh, simply, the executive secretary was very clear during the press conference. Ang position nila is recommendatory. Mm-hmm. Everything that they said is recommendatory. Even yung sinabi nila na we see it as an accident. So this was a sensitive recommendatory position which, of course, the president uh, eventually overturned after he went to the West Palm. Why would the executive secretary go public with a recommendatory position <laughs> of the Maritime uh, Council? I think Parang the ganun, was, it, it just think, serves yeah. to confuse. No, uh, I think it's a major reaction to the escalate. Uh, I think there's also panic on the mm-hmm. part of the... Uh, of the executive secretary that this might go out of hand. But of course, at the end, President Marcos exercised his prerogative that the buck stops with him. Okay. Pero, pero di ba, Patrick, sabi rin ni executive secretary ay hindi siya sanay sa press conference. Right. Oo nga. Kasalanan nga yan ng journalist eh. Tanong kasi ng panong. Ang kulit eh. <laughs> Makulit kasi kaya ganon. <laughs> Okay, uh, since, uh, if I may have the chance to ask a question, since you just see Ronald, no? 
Yan. Sige. Uh, uh, Diretso yung kwento ko kay Ronald. Ronald, sa study ko, no, mga example of articles ko, of course, looking at the policy of the current administration, and of course, the policy of the late President Benigno Aquino III, ang sinasabi ko, there's a similarity that both presidents challenge China to expand its claim. Will you agree with me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> May similarity sa foreign policy. Ganun lang, Ronald. Ang kaibahan, ang kaibahan uh -oh. lang, uh, ang, kaib ang kaibahan lang, Prof, ay uh, uh, mukhang yung binabanggit mo na uh, Uh, ano ba yun? The, the, parang gusto ko sabihin, the senior in the room. <laughs> Yung senior in the room, mukhang uh, mas, uh, mas uh, apparent kesa nung panahon ni Pinoy. And yung senior in the room, senior, siguro, <laughs> was trying to uh, cut a deal. <laughs> diba? <laughs> Eto, senior in the room, panic. Uh -huh. But uh, it might drag a country into a major conflict confrontation with China. <laughs> with that, thank you for joining the StoryCon, <laughs> Professor okay. Renato De Castro. Thank you for your time, Professor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank, thank you. you uh, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Uh, professor, dahil mong tanong, ha? Hindi ba kasagot, eh? Nahirahapan, eh. Baka ano masabi. Baka ano masabi. Kwento mo na lang, Ronald. Pagbalik mo. Hindi rin ako sanay sa press con. You're watching Star Con on One News. Just need to take a break. Please stay with us. We've got the developing news and the stories behind the headlines. Welcome back to the Story Conference. I'm Patrick Pias. I'm at Lingao, also with us Ami Pamintuan and Tito Ronald Llamas, all the way from the U.S., uh, on the way home in a few hours, I suppose. So, Tito Ronald, <laughs> intingan namin, ha? Eh. So, Ed, Ed, inamin ni Professor kung sino yung adult in the room, ha? Oh, my! <laughs> kung sino yung senior in the room. <laughs> oh, uh, pero, Ro Ro Ronald, curious ako, parang, parang loaded every time we, we, we talk about the adult in the room. Parang medyo loaded. Parang may alam ka na gusto mo sabihin na ayaw mo sabihin. Yan. <laughs> Inamin naman yung prom, eh, di ba? Kung sino yung adult in the room. <laughs> so, so, sino nga? So, so, so sino, yung, ano, sino yung mga prepubescent in the room? <laughs> <laughs> sino yung mga non-adults? Mas interesado oh, ko doon. Well, ang, uh, ang sinasabi ni Professor, ang adult in the room ay yung mga puti. Di ba? Ay yung, yung, yung kailangan yung vessel nila sa resupply. Mm -hmm. Which is not... Which is not the escalation. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah. So, if you're going so, to bring, you know, you're, you're going to bring a few cans of sardines, you bring a battle group. Critical, <laughs> critical, si prop dun sa the escalation. Pero ma makikita natin yun for the next, for the hmm. coming weeks, makikita natin kasi kapag ganyang medyo high profile yung meeting natin na yan, ha? Mm -hmm. And uh, ang US nag-issue din ng statement niya yon na uh, na welcoming the agreement between the Philippines and China to de-escalate nga. Siyempre, problema din nila. Hindi naman basta-basta makasugod dyan yung mga, yung mga Amerikano, even if we request, kahit nga MDT, hindi yan automatically matitrigger kung sakasakaling magkaroon ng armed conflict. Eh. Sasabi uh, medyo nga lang may, ano. May proseso pa yan. Eh. So I'm sure they actually genuinely welcome nga na nag-uusap tayo oh. with China. Right. Sabi nga ng ano, adult in the room, Ami, um, uh, hindi, oh. pa, hindi pa ready yung mga kano. <laughs> yeah, I think that was, also the, that was also the situation yeah. in 2012. Eh. Kaya, yeah. kaya the Americans were were not that uh, hot to support us uh, and push for no. Uh, mm. Well, they brokered apparently, allegedly. Yeah, yeah. They were the yeah. ones who brokered the pullout yeah. because they didn't want to, uh, no, to be get, to get. They didn't take to... sides. They didn't take our side oh. back then. The bar in 2012, they didn't exactly take our side in Scarborough. Yes. In the Scarborough oh, yeah. standoff. Pullout sila. Kaya nga sabi ko kay Prof kanina, yun yung difference. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, mas assertive yung adult in the room Ayaw. kesa nung 2012. Mm -hmm. less, very less assertive sila noon. Mm -hmm. no, hindi pa sila, mas, parang nagsisimula pa lang silang pumasok eh, dito sa Pero, ating video. Pero Ronald, kung, kung mas assertive, kung seemingly assertive ngayon yung US, di ba dahil in response nga to greater Chinese uh, aggression? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Pero, 
Actually, Pero busy, may... busy ngayon yung US na parami nilang problema. They have to deal with a lot Ukraine, Israel, mag e pa sila. Me oh, medyo, yes. <laughs> medyo ano yun eh. Ronald medyo, Ami. Ro Ronald oh, Ami, let's... Ami, we, nung, we, nung okay. parang ni Pinoy, ay merong Asia pivot si Obama. Pero yung kanyang okay. Asia pivot, wala pang laman. Hindi naman natuloy yun. Okay. Kaya nga, wala Di pang substance. Natuloy. Ngayon, ngayon, yung Asia pivot nila may laman. At uh, ikalawa, hmm. nilinaw nila yung Taiwan issue. Yung uh, hmm. uh, strategic ambiguity na foreign policy nila in relation sa Taiwan hmm. for more than four decades, nilinaw nila under Biden that they are hmm. willing to defend Taiwan militarily. So doon natapos, hmm. sa panahon ni okay. Biden, natapos yung uh, strategic ambiguity nila. So yun yung kaibahan hmm. dahil related yung Taiwan dito sa issue ng South China Sea. Okay. Bok, okay. Kaya kami naman tayo. aggressive sila ngayon. Kami naman tayo. May guest tayo. Baka mawala, maputol yung guest natin. Uh, oh. we, we, we have on the line joining us as a resource is Malutikia of Publicus. Uh, it's a, they have a survey. They have a survey. Ito pahayag survey. Okay. Bok? Mm. Uh, Miss Malu, magandang hapon. Thank you for joining us. Ay, magandang hapon sa inyo. Uh, Kay, kay Ami, kay Ronald, kay Patrick, at kay Ed. Hi, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, I'm going to uh, yung, yung uh, statement ninyo dun sa pahayag second quarter survey. Um, uh, at least this much I get. Uh, stable uh, or steady approval ratings ni BBM, ni Martin Robaldes, at ni uh, Chief Justice Alex Hesmundo. Pero significant, uh, that's the word that you use, significant decline yung kay VP Sara by uh, I think seven percentage points dun sa uh, approval and then five percentage points dun sa trust ratings. Uh, we're trying to ano, understand why the why the decline uh, when Shalang. the others. Uh, well, well, I think she, she also has a dip in ratings. Eh. Mm -hmm. uh, pero notable mm -hmm. yung kay, kay VP Sara. Eh. Uh, what's the explanation for that, ma'am? Well, uh, tingnan niyo yung me, me, meron isang para tayong nag-e-echo. Ay, may echo ba? Ay, teka. Hindi, oh. wala, wala. Wala? Okay. Pa, uh, kung titignan okay nyo, meron dyang isang question, uh, ano ba yung pressing national issue that is affecting the overall performance of the Vice President? Mm -hmm. Makikita nyo doon, uh, yung top three, uh, lahat yung tungkol sa tatay niya. And that's uh, mm -hmm. around 56%. So, oh, okay. ano yung yung number one doon is the inclusion of the VP uh, doon sa accused in crimes against the ICC, ICC. 24%. Mm. Oo, oh, oh, 24% yun. Yung kay Duterte accusing President Marcos of taking cocaine, 16% yun. Yung congressional investigation on the so-called uh, gentleman's agreement, President. 16%. Okay, so, so makikita mo yung yung number four, five, six is all about her work as DepEd. So it has nothing to do with DepEd. Everything to do with the political climate. So Ms. Tikia, her her father's uh -huh. dragging her down. Yes, uh, the father, whatever the father, it, it, you have to understand that it that Duterte is a shared brand. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so technically, whatever one says, it can influence uh, the incumbent. Uh, so the former president mm -hmm. saying so many things can influence the incumbent, which is the vice president, who is the secretary. Um, so titingnan mo rin doon during the survey period, uh, she remained quiet on issues. Um, uh, as I guess um, she, she Ronald uh, knows this. Uh, Uh, nagkomentaryo na rin siya dyan, yung sinabing na no comment, no comment. So, uh, these things uh, all add up to that negative 7% uh, in terms of the of the approval. no um, And that is high because that is uh, more than the margin of error which is plus or minus 3. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ms. Malu, her resignation from that ed and from the cabinet of the president, Is this going to change the dynamics in such a way na, you know, uh, whatever her father does won't affect her performance rating? Well, uh, we did not. Uh, the survey period was from 15 to 19 June. So, hindi namin na-capture yung pagre-resign. Pero nagtanong kami, 
kung magre-resign si BP as DepEd Secretary, uh, yung ba ay uh, pabor kayo o hindi, lumalabas 56% were saying no. Do not resign. But since nag-resign na siya, yung, yung, yung tanganong mo, will it affect? I think being, parang naalis yung, yung onus, yung burden, uh, now, uh, however she will probably shape her role in the future, will impact on that uh, approval. Now, ang approval na lang niya is uh, as Vice President, not as DepEd. Ayan Pero ang manong... panungan ngayon, mystic yan, ano? ayan ang spekulasyon ngayon. Tuloy-tuloy ba yung slide na yan? Ay, ikaw as an analyst, Anong tingin mo? You think it will be sustained? Kasi malapit na yung midterm elections. Yan ang tinitingnan ngayon, yung, yung Duterte brand nga. Anong impact nyan sa Duterte brand? And sa ano nga, yung ratings ng vice president, tuloy-tuloy ba yung pagbagsak niya? Uh, do you think? Dagdag sa tanong ni Ami, uh, Miss Tikiya. Dagdag, dagdag lang sa tanong ni, ni Ami. Uh, pagkakasabi mo kasi, may epekto yung uh, tatay may epekto yung Duterte brand doon sa pagbaba ni Sara. Pero ngayon, nawala na siya sa, sa official family na, ni President Bongbo Marcos. Uh, ang, ang trend, siya yung mag-lead ng opposition, sabi nga ni ex-human rights lawyer Harry Roque. Di ba tamas, magpapatuloy siyang tamaan dahil mapapalapit siya sa kanyang tatay? Siya nga yung uh, magsasama sila dito sa Duterte opposition na sinasabi. Eh, pagkakasabi mo, ito yung nag-drag sa kanya pababa. So, okay. dagdag sa tanong ni Ami, magpapatuloy ba because of the consolidation of the Duterte as an opposition? Well, um, again, uh, yung mga tanong nyo, very speculative, but I will try to, to, to analyze it uh, per the number. One, uh, I think very strategic yung sinabi ng tatlong, tatlong Duterte natatakbo uh, sinabi niya yung mga date uh, meron sa midterm na uh, sa senador at meron 2028 um, alam naman yan nung si Rona alam niya um, uh, why this thing is being done now uh, second will it tutuloy ba ang pagdaus-us niya um, sa tingin ko hindi kasi uh, hindi pa defined uh, siya ba ay maglilid ng opposition, katulad ng tinanong ni Ronaldo, siya ba ang maglilid ng opposition, o magiging fiscalizer lang siya. Makikita nyo doon sa may parte doon sa survey na measure yung pro-admin at anti-admin. Makikita nyo yung pro-admin na wawalan ng traction pumupunta sa undecided. Yung undecided nasa 50% more. Uh, yung opposition, ganun din yung behavior. From nung una, opposition na opposition sila, ngayon pumupunta na sila sa undecided. Bakit? Dahil hindi klarado kung sino ang opposition. So between now and October, which is the filing, um, sa tingin ko very fluid yung sitwasyon. Uh, depende kung sino talagang tatakbo dun sa mga Duterte. Depende kung sino talaga yung magiging mukha ng opposition. At depende kung anong desisyon ni Vice President, kung siya pa'y magiging oposisyon, uh, supporter pa rin ng administrasyon, or fiscalizer. Ma'am, let me ask you this. Uh, ito, labas na ito sa survey, sa survey ng publikos. Let me ask you this as a political strategist. Uh, what do you think would be the best uh, political route for Sara Duterte um, to be the, the, the head of the opposition? Or... To be a fiscalizer lang? Um, sa tingin ko, depende yan kung anong plano niya sa 2028. Eh. Kasi kung siya desididong tumakbo sa 2028, kailangan klarado yung contrast. Mm. So yung pagiging yeah. opposition uh, ay ang tamang uh, uh, position. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, kung ang hindi siya desidido sa 2028, pero gusto niyang mag ipalabas ang mga posisyon niya sa mga issues, lalo na itong issues na particular sa atin, no? yung politics of the stomach, pressure ng bilihin, Inflation. ng utilities. Mm. Oo. Kung, kung, kung gusto niyang pumalaot dyan, uh, sa tingin ko magandang uh, direction yun. So, depende talaga kung anong plano niya sa 2028. Kasi sa 2025, 
o kung hindi rin siya mag-endorse ng slate eh. O kung mamimili siya at ang balita ko eh uh, halos sa uh, local ang gagawin niyang endorsement. Pero mistake niya, sinabi na niya na her brother, si Sebastian, will be running in 2028, although she clarified the next day nga na hindi pa daw final yung desisyon na yun ng pamilya. Anong impact kaya nun sa ratings ni Vice President? <laughs> oh, na yung kapatid ah, pala niya, ang tatakbo, hindi siya. Oo, oh, alam mo, Ami, sa tingin ko, hmm. nagta-trial balloon, lahat ng mga hmm. politiko ngayon, nagta-trial balloon, kung sasama hmm. pa sila dun sa... Uh, napakalaking partido ng incumbent o maninatili sila yeah. sa oposisyon. So ako ang tingin ko doon, trial balloon, wala naman nating prevent uh, the youngest Duterte from running and seeking the presidency. But you guys know that uh, there's much at stake uh, being yeah. mayor and being president of the country. Malu Tikiya, maraming salamat. Thank you for your time, Malu. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Thank you. That was Malu Tikiya, CEO of Publicus Asia, uh, which conducted a survey that showed... And political strategies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that showed uh, hmm. BP Sara, his numbers going down. Anyway, thank you for joining the story on today. I'm Ipa Mintuan, Editor-in-Chief of the Philippine Star, and Ronald Diamas, our resident political pundit. Join us again tomorrow at 4 p.m. for the story on. I'm Ed Lingao. I'm Patrick Pais. We are One News, All Sides, All the Time. This is the Story Conference Group or the Story Conference Group.